Okay, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure you guys can hear me. If you can, if you can hear me, go ahead and type in yes, uh, and we'll we'll go ahead and get started. I appreciate your coming to our Metastock webinar tonight. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, read our legal disclaimer like we usually do, and we'll go ahead and get started from there. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, te and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Equus shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in conjunction with the company. So with that being said, we've got that out of the way. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, really appreciate you guys coming in here, and hopefully it's uh, something that is worthwhile for you. Uh, today we're going to uh, have a lesson by Pratik Patel and uh, Ty. They're going to go through some lessons on trading the futures markets. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to do what I normally do, and that's get out of the way and let them kind of talk about what they want to talk about. So. Uh, uh, here we go. Good. Let's go ahead and bring you on, Pratik. Thanks. Hey, Jeff. It's Ty. Um, if I could do a quick mic check, too, if everybody could just type a, a yes, if they can hear me okay. Oh, you're coming in beautifully to me. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks much, Jeff, for the introduction, and uh, thanks to you and, and Metastock for invite us, inviting us to present today. We really appreciate it, and it's great to be here. I want to thank all the attendees, of course, for taking time out of their busy schedule, and hopefully we'll give you a, a good nugget of information and uh, hopefully help out your trading career. So anyhow, my name is Ty Ball. I'm uh, one of the principals here with, at the Futures Room with Pratik Patel. Um, Teek and I have about almost two decades of combined trading experiences, and uh, we both have the scars and gray hairs to prove it. So uh, we pride ourselves on uh, just being two hardworking guys from Texas, and we like rolling up our sleeves every day and trading. Uh, I will apologize. We are not polished, paid marketers or presenters like you might see at some of the, uh, the shows or, or books you read, but uh, we're, just, we're just average traders out there, and we put our heads together about a year and a half ago, and we combined our passion for trading and educating and formed the, the Futures Room. So our goal with the Futures Room is just like it says on the slide. Uh, we just want to provide a live trading education, unlike uh, many of the systems out there that you can you can spend lots of dollars on. We wanted to provide something that was actually live in real time and actually had a voice behind it. So uh, we back it up with our, with our own personal trades. A little bit of background on Pratik. He is the head trader who moderates the webinar each and every day. Uh, he is an independent retail trader, and he went through the school of uh, hard knocks, so to speak, and taught himself. So it, as many of you know now, out there, it's a very hard thing to do, and, and many have failed before him. Uh, he is a guest speaker at a lot of events. He just uh, was presenting up in Dallas, and he'll be back in Vegas again this year at the Features in Forex Expo in September and he contributes a lot to uh, some other sites and publications. So what is our business, the, the futures room, the live trading room? Uh, very simply put, uh, it's, it's a way for traders to get access to a live experienced trader, and it gives them the ability to look over our shoulder and see what we do and hear our thoughts and understand the reasoning behind each and every trade uh, that's initiated. wanted to touch briefly on trader psychology. Uh, if you're a new trader or a veteran trader, uh, you, you, you're probably either reading or have run a ton of books and watched a lot of things. And uh, in a nutshell, I try and break it down whenever I do a presentation or talk to a group of traders. Uh, the number one thing I see out there, and I've, I've literally coached and trained hundreds of traders uh, in the US and overseas, and the number one thing, problem I see out there is, you know, what I find is people are either too focused on the outcome and not the actual process, the second by second, minute by minute process. So I always ask people to focus on the process, a little bit less on the outcome, what they might make or lose on the trade, and really break it down and define that process and execute, execute, execute. 
Uh, secondly, risk reward. That's the number one thing that gets traders in trouble out there. If you're not attempting a, a two to one, three to one, or four to one risk reward ratio, um, I think your your system is flawed. Uh, if you're executing on a one to one basis, uh, then you better be right all you know 51 percent of the time or more and trade a lot to make any money. So that is one thing we we focus on is getting our risk reward correct. Uh, and lastly, people say, what does it take to to be a career trader? And I've been trading uh, I guess over 12 years. You know, what does it take? And the number one thing, and probably everybody's read this, is patience and discipline. And I say it over and over and over, but when I see traders uh, blow out or get out of the business, it's usually because one of those two are lacking. And it, it sounds simple, but is the hardest thing for traders to control. Lastly, emotions of trading. Uh, we all have them. Um, I've seen tantrums and I've seen guys that would not crack a smile or you wouldn't know if they're up or down hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, we all have them. It's, you know, can we suppress them? If we don't suppress them, do those emotions get in the way of our trading? You know, it's hard. Every person is different. So what I preach is things that help you can, to minimize those emotions, you know, either direction. And the number one thing I, I recommend is, you know, have a solid system or game plan each and every day. Um, narrow down your focus. Don't try and do everything under the sun. Uh, the thing Pratik prides himself on, he, he's a sharpshooter. He does not overtrade. He literally pulls the trigger, you know, one, uh, six or seven times a day at most. Um, he plays setups that he's good at, that he's good at identifying and executing on a daily basis. Uh, lastly, if something's working, and all of a sudden it, it doesn't for some reason, don't, don't necessarily change up your whole system immediately if it's been working a long time, you know, tweak it. It's probably just something that, you know, it's, it's a market fluctuation or the overall market's changed um, how your process works a little bit. So tweak it to adapt to the marketplace. Don't go and reinvent the wheel every time, you know, you go on a small losing streak. And then lastly, accept losses. They're part of the game. Unless you're some high-frequency algorithm running at Goldman Sachs, you're not going to make money every single day, typically. Um, so accept losing. It is part of our business. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Pratik. He's going to take it over. He's going to talk to you a little bit about why he's chose to trade in the grains markets. Uh, we're not saying that is the only place to trade or the best place to trade. And there's plenty of our clients that trade other markets. But subscribe to us and, and trade the grains alongside of us because uh, we don't execute too many times during the day, and they found it a nice complement to their trading. So anyway, here's Pratik. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Uh, just want to do a quick mic check with everybody and make sure everybody can hear me on my end. Uh, you can type in a yes or why. All right, great. All right, so I want to thank Ty for the intro. Uh, great uh, introduction. Also, want to thank uh, Jeffrey and Metastock for letting us present um, this evening. And also, I want to thank everybody in attendance for taking time out of your schedule to join us for this presentation. So, as Ty mentioned, um, I'm an independent retail trader. I've been trading uh, for about seven years uh, and full time. I started after I graduated college. And I've traded almost every single market out there. Um, being a new trader, not knowing anything, you know, being a complete novice, uh, you hear a lot of people trading a certain market, or you hear media going towards one market, and you might want to dabble into it. So I've traded, you know, from S&P index futures, silver, cotton, and currencies. And over the years, um, you know, I went through the ups and downs of trading, and I wanted to get into trading full time as a career, and I had a passion for it. And there had to be a way of consistently making money. Uh, people are doing it out there. Uh, why would, you know, I'm not any different. Why can't I do it? And um, I realized I had to narrow down what I was trading and focus on a handful of uh, markets that I can understand a uh, majority of the time. Also, under, you know, you want to make the markets your friend, your best friend. You want to understand why it's doing a certain thing, what it can potentially do. And out of all the markets, um, I came into a small niche into trading the, the grain markets, the agricultural grains. I trade on the CBOT, um, all under CME. Um, and then there are your corn, soybean, and wheat. Uh, corn is uh, one of the oldest and heavily traded markets 
out there. Uh, corn was trading long before um, oil got into the speculative world and index futures. So there's a lot of history and price movement that uh, goes with the uh, corn futures and same thing with the grains. Um, and you know it's and you know the the market dynamics have changed substantially. Um, I know a lot of people. I'll talk to a lot of traders, and they think of corn as um, the old market to trade, where you know they're still thinking you're going to get a bushel of corn in your backyard, or it's an old market. Uh, it has changed substantially um, with uh, the markets being global now, and a lot of money pouring into the ag sector, and also a lot of demand from developing countries overseas. The BRICS. Uh, some of the biggest um, um, importers of our um, grains, soybean, corn, and wheat, uh, Japan and China being number one and two, um, demanding a lot of our corn. So there's a lot of things that back up grains, but uh, one great thing about that, you have uh, three different markets to trade around. You're not sticking with one market. Uh, for example, if anybody's trading, or when I was trading the index futures, I'd had to keep you know constantly looking at the one front month and trying to make the market if you know there's no action I would create a scenario okay well this looks like a good trading opportunity let me get into it uh, within the grains you're not fighting the market uh, you're looking for opportunities within three different grains also um, you don't get too much interference for what's going on uh, recently right now in the past couple of weeks there has been a lot of debate a lot of uh, you know um, intervention with the Fed about um, the debt ceiling and that has affected the currencies that has affected S&P uh, Dow, Dow Jones has affected oil gold metals a lot and that has heavily affected day trading on those markets but you don't see too much of that interfering with the grains uh, that information is not going to all of a sudden spike the market or break the market uh, day trading the grain market so one thing I love about the grains is you don't get too many interference from geopolitical um, issues or uh, financial issues that might be affecting other markets. And also uh, day, uh, grains, I've seen a lot of uh, day traders, day trading setups, a lot of common pattern recognitions that you will find in any uh, textbook of a, a head and shoulder or double bottom, triple top or vice versa. And I've seen a lot of those things happen within the grains. So I'm um, asked, you know, quite a few times, uh, what does it take to be a consistent trader? I uh, touched upon this a little bit. A lot of it has to do with psychology and the emotions of trading. Um, as you mentioned, risk, in my opinion, is uh, number one with trading. Um, you know, evident from what we saw in the past couple of years, nobody looked at risk. Uh, I think risk needs to be uh, put as the number one thing on your uh, list to um, as a to make a consistent trader. Uh, so, you know, got to be patient, um, average trades, and we're not turning the market. Uh, we're looking for uh, consistent setups and anywhere from one trade to six trades a day. And sometimes if taking a day off or missing a trade, uh, there's nothing wrong with that either. And uh, since we're, um, my specialty is day trading, and I'll day trade the intraday uh, markets. And with that, we'll look for trends. I'm a more of a trend trader. I'm not going to scalp, so I'll, you know, there's only three things markets can do, go up, down, or sideways. And once we identify one of these trends within the intraday, and that's how we'll look for a setup, and I'll go, go over some of those examples in the next couple of slides. So one thing um, I use every single day when trading is something that I call or develop calling, uh, it's called the trading zone. Um, it's a formula that I use that calculates um, a, a trading zone which is an interest to buy or sell depending on what side of the market we're going on. Uh, the great thing I like about the trading zone, it gives you your three variables, that important variables you need as a trader. You need to know your risk, you need to know where you want to enter, and you also want to look to where you potentially want to take that target out, or where do you want to take that profit. So this um, formula provides all the essential uh, things for uh, trading or getting into a trade. And this can be applied to any market, um, stocks, uh, futures, uh, any kind of future you want to trade, financials, currencies. But I've seen a lot of this uh, consistently happen within the grains. 
uh, one uh, important thing about trading is entering when to enter the market and how to enter the market. Uh, one of the um, important things that I put in first is your stop order. Your stop order um, lets you accept that you're going to accept a loss or you're accepting the risk involved in that trade. Um, a lot of the times people just want to enter the market, don't, you know, they don't want to worry about the risk uh, or the stop and they have one of those quote unquote mental stops or um, if stops, if this happens, then I'll put in a stop. Um, to avoid all that hassle, avoid a, you know the extra stress on trading, just put the stop order in right away. Uh, it's not going to affect you and um, it's going to be sitting there parked. And then once um, you have the stop order ready, and you know what kind of risk you want to take, you want to look to enter within the trading zone. And this provides a variable price to where you can get in and it can better your risk or you know and better your profit potential and also you always want to have your profit order uh, target working in the system as well which allows um, well I'm sorry which will avoid the hopes of trading it you know let's say for example you bought the markets going in your favor and you want to get that extra tick or you want to get that extra point and you don't have an exit working and next thing you know the market reverses so having that order already working for you uh, once it's triggered, you're out of the market, and then you can uh, sit and wait for another trading opportunity. So uh, two very common examples uh, or setups that I see happen almost every single day in either one of these grains is going to be your pullback and retracements. And this is a great way to avoid buying at the top of the rally or buying into a rally or selling into the break or bottom of the break. Um, uh, I'm sure it's happened to you many times, not many times, but it has happened at least once to where uh, you're bought, you're buying into the rally, you're seeing all this action, and you buy at the exact top of the rally, and the next thing the market goes against you, and not knowing your risk, uh, you're just in panic mode, letting the market fall, not knowing what to do. These uh, retracements and pullbacks uh, somewhat avoid that from happening. Uh, for example, in this trade that we put on um, actually the other day, um, we saw the market move lower. So we knew we wanted to get into some kind of selling opportunity, seeing that the market continue to make some lower lows. Uh, but wanted to join the sell side, but didn't want to just sell into it, not knowing where my stops are going to be at, or not knowing where the market can potentially take me. So after about an hour since the market sold off, the market started consolidating, and we had this trading zone of where we want to potentially look to get into a short side. And this is all variable. Uh, you can enter the top of the zone, bottom of the zone, or in the middle of the zone. And the great thing about it is we know that we want to keep our stop at the most recent resistance, and we want to potentially take out our target at... Um, when the market makes that lower low, going back to that trend, uh, making those lower lows and the higher lows. So in this case, uh, we got into a setup to where we wanted to get into a short opportunity. And even though the market kind of went away from us a little bit, but as long as it's holding true to this trading zone and is not hitting your stop, the market or this position, the setup will still is still valid. So in this case, the market started moving lower, which is a good indicator for us, knowing that this trend is going to continue to go in that favor. And then we all also start implementing trailing stops. You always want to mitigate that risk. You know your risk outright, but you always want to start mitigating it once that position starts going in your favor. So once it starts going in our favor, start implementing trailing stops at every key level that we can see. And then potentially we want to offset that target, that trade when the market makes that new low. And sometimes it's going to come all the way through make that new low. Sometimes I'll make a new low by one tick. Or it's going to come into that area. It all depends on how the market is that certain day. But the advantage that you know every trader gets is they'll be able to hear my rationale behind that trade. So if things don't look start looking very friendly, we can go ahead or I'll go ahead and uh, get out of that trade either by scratching out or taking a few points out of that trade um, and also the market went back into that trading zone and it gave you another opportunity to get into that sell side so you're selling you're catching the trend which is a downtrend but you're not selling into the trend you're waiting for 
certain things to happen before you can get into that trade. So this is an example of how I would get into a sell side. Let me show you an example of what to do when the market's going on the upside. So this is a soybean futures uh, contract or market that we had happen today actually. So in this case, um, analyzing the market, uh, reading out the market, waiting for a setup that you know I'm comfortable with and also the risk. We saw a double bottom form on the market. So this indicated to uh, my tr uh, trading style that possibly mar prices have halted and they will move higher. And in this case, they did. So I went ahead and used these two pivot points the high that we hit uh, in mid-morning and the double bottom, we got a trading zone, a buying zone, right um, in uh, the midday. And the trading zone was about a 2.3 point range. So it's a variable price to where you can potentially position yourself to get in. And even though the market did trade sideways for about 30 minutes, as long as it's it's not breaking any technical barriers and breaking any technical supports, you're still this position, this trend is still valid and still intact. The only way you, you'd want to enter this position is if you're comfortable with the risk involved. You know the risk outright before entering that trade, and these are just a, a ballpark uh, risk that you're given outright. Um, obviously, you always want to implement trailing stops. You want to implement. Um, stops to uh, lock in your profits, but uh, you're not going to sit there and out, you know, weigh out that, uh, weigh out that risk or that stop to get triggered. You're going to cover that position before the markets um, turn against you substantially. So in this case, got into the long side of this position, started going on our favor, start trailing our stops up every chance we can get to mitigate any kind of risk exposure. Uh, market started moving higher, and it took a while for the market to move up, but it eventually hit our target zone, and we went ahead and offset in that trade. So sometimes when the markets are very active, we'll get into, we'll see a handful of trades or a handful of setups. Uh, sometimes when they're kind of quiet, we'll get about one or two trades a day, but and that can be on any of these grains. And also one very uh, key indicator that I like to use is the volume. Volume gives me an insight of how much action is coming into the marketplace. If, you st if I start seeing a lot of volume generating around the trading zone, it gives me another indicator, another confirmation, signaling that the setup is valid and it continues to work. So another key thing about exiting the market is you want to know where you want to keep your um, exit uh, prices you want to be able to exit at certain levels and these are prices that you already accepted before getting into a trade um, saying I'm I want to exit I'm sorry I want to enter at point A and I want to exit at point B make sure you accept that and once you accept that make sure that order is working you don't want to get into a position to where it's hitting your target but you're not putting in that exit uh, because you want to get more points out of it um, you know trading is always going to Trading is always going to provide you other opportunities, so there's no way of saying, you know, there's, you, should, you should avoid saying that this is the only trade that is going to happen. I have to get every single tick I can out of it. Uh, one thing I can guarantee you in trading is tomorrow is going to be a new trading day. The next hour is going to be a new trading hour. So you always get more opportunity to trade. Never feel that you're missing an opportunity. Uh, never feel that you, um, not, you're not going to be able to trade again. Markets are always going to open up, they're always going to move, that's the ebb and flow of it, and always setups will form, either they'll form multiple times in a day or maybe form that one time in a day, but you have the entire year to trade, don't uh, throw all your eggs on one given trade, diversify yourself, and also uh, we also pr like to provide multiple exits for people that want to scale out of a trade, I personally like to exit the trade um, once that first target is hit. Since I accepted that as a profit target in the first place, I want to go ahead and take that trade out. And also, there's um, once you're out of that trade, uh, go ahead and wait on the sidelines. Um, uh, there's always going to be another opportunity to get another setup. So that's a couple you know, things that you want to look out for when you're ready to exit the market. 
So just uh, want to wrap up uh, soon. Uh, one thing uh, we are uh, social media is you know growing day by day, and you can always follow us and always see what's going on with the futures room and MetaStock um, on the various social media sites: uh, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. On YouTube, we post uh, videos of s some presentations, some trading strategies. Uh, Twitter sometimes will. A tweet about things that are going on in the grain complex or grain or in the markets in general and on Facebook you can see um, photos of previous uh, trade shows and also some news updates so uh, I want to go ahead and wrap up and also want to thank everybody today for joining us and uh, to show our your our appreciation for you attending uh, we want to extend a compliment, complimentary five-day trial to everybody in attendance. Usually we'll give uh, people a one-day trial, but we'll go ahead and send you a five-day trial to check out the live trading room and also to get some more information about the Metastock uh, platform and software that they provide. Uh, you can visit our website at thefuturesroom.com and on the website on the main page there's a big yellow button it says one day, but you can go ahead and click it, fill out the information, and uh, Ty or myself will send you a five-day trial to the room, and you can check us out for a whole full week, and you can see what we're all about, and also get a feel of how the Metastock software works, and get the see the perks of it. Um, you can email us at clientservices at futuresroom.com, and you can also give us a call at 512-WE-TRADE. So I want to go ahead and open up um, the uh, Q&A uh, session. Uh, if you have any questions about Metastock, the trading room, trading, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, there's uh, Any question is always welcome, so never feel like there's no uh, stupid question in trading. There's never a dumb question. And also, if uh, Jeffrey, if you have any comments to make about the software, you can also step in and speak. Then we had a question earlier about the market hours for the grains. Uh, the grains, they have a great market hours. They open up at 9.30 central and they close at 1.15 central. And um, it's a great uh, time to trade. Uh, you can, you know, you're done with your day at 1.15 and you start around 9.30. And uh, my trading style, I'm not going to trade the opening bell and I'm not going to trade the closing bell. So We'll start actively trading right around uh, 9.45, 10 o'clock central, and we'll end our session around 1 central. And a lot of my, all my trading setups are based off a three minute uh, time frame chart. Um, either they can be candlesticks or they can be the bar charts, but they are uh, standard three minute time frames. Uh, do I hold positions overnight? Uh, no, I do not. Um, so they're all, all day trades, so I'll be out of the market before the closing bell. Uh, one thing uh, you want to avoid the closing bell chop, uh, especially with these markets being Globex electronic, because you can see huge swings and in coming into the closing bell. So I'll be flat uh, before the closing bell period comes. The average uh, time that we are in a trade with an intraday can be anywhere from minutes depending on how fast the market is to about 30 minutes uh, 40 minutes um, it's extremely rare that we'll be in a position for an hour um, that has to do with the lack of volume and that happens a lot during the holiday season but normally we're in a trade um, we're out of it you know within a 30 minute time for a span Uh, we do keep a track record of our trades, but they're not audited. They're just the stuff that's given from our broker. But on average, over the course of over a year, we have been positive um, end of month. And also we range anywhere from 10 points 
um, all the way up to 120 points um, within our trading room. It all depends on the the month, you know, the volume that we're seeing, the kind of market that we're getting. Uh, you know, markets will tend to dry up around the holidays, and that can be, you know, any Labor Day weekend coming, Memorial Day weekend, and markets will tend to dry up substantially around uh, Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas. Uh, what's your uh, no we do I mean we are gonna have losing days I mean we're not you know we're not Goldman Sachs or some quant algos um, but average drawdown uh, you're looking at per contract about a hundred bucks hundred fifty dollars on the drawdown uh, we don't look to uh, you know hit all those loose stops we'll have um, stops but you know we always implement trailing stops and when trades don't look very good uh, we'll look to cut out of those trades so you know, we might have one uh, down day in a, a week, um, but um, overall, we look, um, we'll post in the positive, but drawdowns do happen, and um, once they happen, we look to keep them to a very minimal dollar amount. And we average about 15 uh, up days out of the month on average. And also, we have... Um, A good clientele uh, base of you know newbies and also veterans alike that will you know come into our trading room to fit their trading style. They like the conservative approach and the steady um, uh, setups. But uh, losing is part of the game, so um, as long as you keep them to a minimal, you're will continue to be a consistent trader. Uh, you know, and the best thing to do is uh, go to our website and check out the free trial. And we're extending this to everybody for five days so you can take advantage of that and uh, get a little bit of a glimpse of the trading style that I have. I do have a minimum number of contracts per trade. Um, within our trading room, um, we keep it standard one lot, but there is no minimum. It all depends on your... Um, trading style, your risk uh, tolerance, your trading account. But uh, what I have on our our side on the trading room, we keep it very simple. We'll keep a one lot trade, so your the new traders can either follow with the one lot. We also have some of the bigger traders who will put on a five to ten lot within the trade. So it's something that you need to be comfortable with. Though uh, you'll never hear us uh, coming in and saying you need to trade ten lots here or five lots. It'll be very um, simple uh, we don't try to get too personal with um, our clients and how they trade we want to just keep things um, simple on our end and our, our main focus is to educate people on trading and we're not going to sit there and recommend uh, what is a tick value or contract value for the grains a uh, great question um, uh, if you're familiar with the S&P, one point, uh, S&P and the grains have the exact same uh, point value, but I'll go over the grains. One point in the grains is equal to uh, $50, uh, which is comprised of four ticks, and one tick is $12.50. So that is the standard contract for corn, soybean, wheat. And you can also get all that information on the CME website, and they'll give you the contract spe uh, specifications. So, that, you know, a good thing about trading the grains, all three grains, is all the contracts are standard. So, you know, uh, if you got one tick, one tick, you know what um, your point value is and you know your P&L. So, you know, one thing, um, the five-day trial is good for the next week. You can get the whole week, uh, but standard, when people come to us, we'll always give them a one-day. So... Uh, please take advantage of this uh, special offer for everybody.
It's a great question, guys. If you have any more, please feel free to ask. I will be here for a little bit, uh, a few more minutes, and then we'll hand over the mic to Jeff, and then he can uh, talk a little bit about uh, the meta stock. What platform we use um, the MetaStock as a news feed. Um, I use my own platform that I used to trade, but as the news feed, which is important as traders, you want to know what's going on in the market. And as your um, quote feed, I'll use the MetaStock and that'll supply you with um, information on what might be going on on the weather wise um, uh, for the grains. Uh, grains sometimes get um, affected by weather, especially in the summertime. But if you check out the MetaStock, um, services and the platforms they provide there are some that give you excellent news feed uh, for um, I'm sorry uh, news feed services and so we you know highly recommend using Metastock they have great services uh, you know backed up by Thomson Reuters you can't get any uh, bigger than that so you need to uh, check them out they have a lot of um, tools and indicators you can use on their platform All right, Pratik, thanks for uh, coming in today. Let's go ahead and kind of wrap up the session uh, for today. Uh, really appreciate having you in here. Uh, we did have one question um, uh, that I don't, I didn't hear an answer for. Maybe I was just kind of a little bit out for a second. But um, if somebody wants to sign up for the five-day trial in a couple of weeks, um, are they able to, Pratik? Is there a deadline in order for them to sign up is basically what they're asking. No, they can. Uh, just make sure that they can. They email us, letting us know that they attended the webinar today, and then we'll make a note of that. And when they're ready to start, we can uh, send that out for them. Okay. Well, great. Uh, we really appreciate again having you out, Pratik. Um, if uh, for those of you that are interested in Metastock, uh, you should check out www.metastock.com/futuresroom, and you can get a free trial there. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll see you at the next class. And thanks for coming today. Thank you.